Hi everybody, it's Jess Phoenix, your volcanologist in residence. Uh, today I'm going to talk about preparing for uh, an earthquake. In this case, putting together your earthquake kit. This also applies to other natural disasters like fires, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, really pretty much anything that could go very, very wrong that the earth can throw at you. It's just good practice to have a kit on hand because no matter where you live, you're vulnerable to some kind of disaster and it's better safe than sorry. So we're going to start off with talking about if you live in a two-story house like I do, you need to have a fire ladder. Uh, this thing folds up real small as you can see and it's going to allow you to escape if you can't reach your stairs. They're very important for anybody who lives in a multi-story building that doesn't already have built-in fire ladders on the outside. Next, we're gonna talk about tools, uh, general tools that'll keep you safe. Respirators, very important to protect you from particulates that may be released during a fire. A lot of times you have fires after an earthquake, so you can get a full on uh, a face respirator, one that covers half of your face or even your full face, or you can go with uh, this N95 type, which filters out 95% of all particulates. Both of them are good options. Get whichever one you can afford and keep it in your kit. You also want uh, multi-tools. I've got this here, this is a Leatherman. Um, they're great, they're kind of pricey, but it's got a variety of different tools in it, from saws to pliers um, to tweezers, to this Gerber one, which is a more affordable option. Same kind of deal. There's screwdriver ends on it. It's very handy to have in an emergency. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you have some kind of hammer. This is my rock hammer, but uh, it's a great one, so I take it wherever I go, particularly in an emergency. And then also a wrench, something you can use to shut off your gas valve because a gas leak is what can cause a fire in the aftermath of an earthquake. You want to be able to shut off the gas to your home. You also need gloves, some kind of hand protection because imagine digging through rubble without them. It's not too fun. You want to have something that's uh, leather or suede, something very tough and durable to protect your hands. Paracord is a really good thing to have. You can cut this to whatever length you need. Uh, you can tie things out of the way. You can use it to help move items. Uh, get some, it's only a few bucks. It's really good to have. You also want duct tape uh, and of course a Sharpie to write on whatever you duct tape. Now this is really useful for horse owners or anyone who has livestock. You can take a piece of the duct tape, slap it on the hoof of your animal, write your phone number on it. That way if you're separated, you can actually be contacted. Um, same goes with anything else you want to keep track of during a disaster. Sticky notes, good for the same reason. Definitely suggest throwing those in. Now on to water. This is really key. Everybody needs at least one gallon per person per day. You want to plan for at least three days. If you can do five or seven days after a disaster, even better. If you've got the storage space, if you've got the budget, definitely do as much as you can. Um, these are nice big water containers. You can find them at uh, camping stores like Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's, REI, um, sometimes Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Walmart, Target. They'll have big containers like these. Fill them up and forget about them for a couple of months. Uh, it's the best way to make sure you have water on hand. Uh, of course, you can also get the water filter in a water bottle, uh, which is a good option or life straws, which you can use to suck water out of, say, a neighbor's pool. Um, this will filter it for you and keep you safe. These cost about $30. Definitely worth the investment uh, because you wanna make sure you have a safe, reliable way to get clean water. These are water pouches. They cost about $2. You can get them at Walmart or camping stores. They're excellent because they fold up so small and they weigh almost nothing when they're not full. That way you make sure that you have access to clean, fresh drinking water. Uh, I highly recommend one of these small portable day packs. Uh, this little one here folds down to smaller than a fist and it folds out into a backpack. So if you need to go walking around your neighborhood and you wanna be able to carry water, this is a great way to do that without taking up a lot of space like a normal backpack would. Um, these are first aid kits. Now, you should have this at home already and one in your car, but uh, if you don't, go out and get them. Uh, anywhere from $10 to $30 is gonna be a good first aid kit and you wanna make sure that you get one that has uh, enough stuff for your whole family. So we're talking bandages, uh, basic antibacterial ointments, things like that. Uh, and you wanna make sure that if you use anything from your first aid kit that you replenish it. 
Uh, that goes for you know, your home as well as the one in your earthquake kit. You also want clothes. This is very important. You want a full change of clothes. You want some shoes that you can actually move around in. So if you wear heels, you don't want to run around after an earthquake in those heels. So keep these in your car, keep them at home. Just make sure you have an old pair of shoes that you can put on and you know that you'll be comfortable when you're trying to navigate unfamiliar territory. A light jacket or a heavier jacket if you live in a colder climate. You wanna make sure you take some sort of something to keep your head warm, in this case a beanie, because you may be sleeping outside for a few nights and you wanna make sure that you're warm and comfortable while you have to do that. Of course, make sure you have a pair of socks in there, warm socks I recommend, and then a full change of clothes, pants, shirt, underwear, all that good stuff. I am not showing you my underwear. Uh, also make sure that you have a fire extinguisher. Uh, this can go in your earthquake kit. You should also have one at home, at least one at home. Uh, these are very important to have. You can buy them at Walmart, Target, um, home improvement stores. Definitely get it and make sure that everyone in your house uh, who is old enough to understand uh, knows how to use it. That's key. Now on to pets. Uh, you know, we have a lot of pets. We have actually 10 pets. So what we have is food here for them for at least five days. Uh, we have medication for our old dog who takes it. We have bird food labeled. We have Roma, that's the old dog. We have her food labeled. We have the cat's food labeled and we have the dog food for the other two dogs labeled. Uh, as far as horses go, if you've got horses like we do, you wanna make sure that you have um, hay, cubed hay in your trailer if you've got a trailer and also a water tank in your trailer. If you don't have a trailer, it gets a little trickier. Uh, you might try to find somebody with a trailer uh, to store extra cubed hay in. Uh, but that is, it's, it's a real challenge if you don't have your own trailer. But if you do, keep the supplies that your horses will need for again, three to five days minimum there in your trailer. Uh, this is the type of bag that you can use for an earthquake kit. It's a big old duffel bag. Uh, I really like these because, you know, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. Like this one was, I think, $40 at Target. And you can throw a bunch of gear in there, a bunch of food, everything you need, and just leave it, check it once a year. It's really important. Set a reminder in your phone, do it now, to check your earthquake kit once per year and replace anything that's expired. You also want plastic bags. This is for keeping any trash in. Uh, you also want to stay sanitary because it gets a little gross if you don't have access to a shower or running water. Wet wipes, antibacterial ones, they're amazing. Keep them in your kit. You need a sleeping bag. This is because you may be stuck outside, like I said before. Um, if you don't have a sleeping bag, just find an old blanket, uh, preferably one you can roll up nice and compact, but you need something like that for your kit. Food. I tend to prefer these because I do a lot of outdoor work, backpacking, camping, hiking. Um, what they are, if you're unfamiliar with them, several different brands, but these are dehydrated meals. All you have to do is add boiling water and let them sit. They cook right in the bag. They're fantastic. Uh, this one's macaroni and cheese. This is beans and rice. Uh, so you can actually eat all right if you, uh, if you don't have access to proper cooking. Uh, it's great because a lot of these are vegetarian options and each of these has enough for two meals in it, uh, which is awesome. So you can feed multiple people with one of those bags. What you need to do to heat the water now, of course, is to have a source of ignition. Uh, lighters are good. If you can, if you don't have a lighter, you can do waterproof matches, but you have to keep them inside either a waterproof case if they're normal matches or the matches must say waterproof on them. You might want to get a little camping stove if you can afford it. Uh, this one packs up inside this nifty little contraption. It all fits inside this pot, uh, but this is the burner and you just set it on your, your fuel source uh, and you cook right on top of it. It's fantastic for just heating up water, dumping them into these packages and being ready to go. This is a really long spork, very lightweight. It reaches all the way to the bottom of these packages. Uh, you can also get regular sporks, very lightweight, easy to clean. Uh, those are something I recommend definitely keeping in your, in your pack. Now, if you don't wanna buy these uh, camping meals or if you can't afford them, uh, these ready-to-eat rices that you just uh, heat for 90 seconds uh, in the microwave, you can dump them into a pan, heat them over a little flame, and you'll have food. Same thing with beans. Uh, beans are great. Any kind of canned food, very, very useful as long as you can uh, either heat it up without too much effort or if it doesn't need to be heated, even better. Make sure you have a can opener if you have the kind like this that don't have pull tabs. 
Now, personal care items. Uh, we're talking about waterproof cases here. Now, in your waterproof case, Carlos and I each have one, uh, you can put really important things. So we're talking spare keys to your car, to your house, um, cash. You need to have cash in your earthquake kit because you don't know if you're going to have access to an ATM. If there's no electricity, the ATM isn't going to work. So you won't be able to get any money out. You won't be able to pay for things with your credit card. Everybody needs to have some kind of light source. This is a headlamp. They're great. Uh, if you've never seen one before and never used one, it literally is a lamp that goes on your head. Um, it doesn't look the coolest, but it works really well if you're trying to cook or say, do first aid on someone, you, you have both hands free. It's like a hands free light, right? They should have called it that. Um, also bring any power cables, an extra one, um, an extra power adapter that'll let you plug in. Copies of your important documents, like your passport, your social security card, credit cards, your driver's license. Put these in here so that you have this information uh, should your stuff get destroyed during an earthquake and a, maybe a subsequent fire. You want to put extra batteries in here for, uh, for your headlamp or your flashlight, of course, and then any medication you might need. Um, you do not want to be stuck without your meds or anyone in your family's meds. Especially make sure that uh, you've got medication for elderly people and for children. Toothbrush, toothpaste, it's great, little, little containers. Um, dry shampoo, if you've never heard of it, it works wonders if you don't have access to a shower. Uh, also a small hairbrush for people like me with long hair. Playing cards are fantastic, I highly recommend those, uh, especially if you're bored. Uh, and this is a power pack you can use to recharge your cell phone. And then a safety whistle. These are great to draw attention if you need help of any kind. Now again, remember, we're not saying you won't ever have access to services again. What we're saying is you need to be self-sufficient in case of a natural disaster. Um, do not wait for the cavalry to come and save your ass because it's not happening. Uh, you have to be able to take care of yourself. So hopefully this has been informative. If you've got any more questions, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can get to them. And I did have some specific requests for information on what to do for folks with disabilities or for people with cognitive impairments. I will send you, uh, or I'll put on the bottom of this, a link to information uh, for those specific requests. Uh, if you have any other questions, please do let me know. Uh, and stay safe, make sure you get your kit together because you do not want to be helpless after a natural disaster, and this is the way you can help yourself. Bye.